I'm TP. And welcome to Let's Learn C++. Today I'll be using Visual Studio Community Edition, which you can download from visualstudio.com. However, you can follow along with whatever IDE or text editor you like. Check out the description below for links to previous tutorials and playlists, if any topic is unfamiliar. Alright, so inheritance. Inheritance can be created by killing off your relatives, starting with the oldest. Oh no, that's a terrible joke. Actually, you just need to outlive everybody else. That's that's how inheritance works. <laughs> All right, created by following the identifier or the name of the class by a colon. You place an access specifier and the base class name right before the curly braces. Inheritance is one of the pillars of object-oriented programming, or OOP, as we learned in our Let's Learn Python series. So let's look at an example. All right, so right here, line five and line six, we have created a base class called my base class, and then we've created a, a derived class or a subclass called my derived. Then after that, we placed a colon right here and then placed the access specifier of public and then the base class name. Following that, we placed the open and close curly braces and finally the semicolon at the end. Because as we remember, semicolons need to be placed at the end of all curly braces, not for functions, but for classes. So the derived class or subclass called my derived now has the base class added to it. So essentially there are now two parts to the whole class now. Kind of like me and my tapeworm. <laughs> no, that's gross. I don't have a tapeworm, only my cats do. Interesting note is that if you forget to place this access specifier of public here, it'll actually make it private. And let's look at an example of what will happen if you forget that. All right, so let's look at an example of this. First, we have our base class here, and then we define a public int i and a print function right here, both of which do nothing. Then below that, in S class, S1, we inherit from base, but notice there is no access specifier of public right in front of base. And we can access those variables just fine within the constructor. However, down below in our sub subclass or our S2 class down here, or a second layer of derived classes, back in the constructor, we cannot actually access this variable i anymore or this function print. That is one of the quirks of C++ and forgetting that accessor. Awesome, so we've successfully created inheritance. All right, let's look now at how constructors handle things. So up top we have a class called MyBase right here, and then we have a private int i or underscore i created, and then below that we declare a public accessor followed by the constructor and then another function called p. And this function p is just so we can output i as a test. And then the base class constructor takes in an int i and just stores that into its previously created member variable. Cool. Then below that we have our class called my derived, which is our drive class or subclass. Then we have again our colon public and then the base class we are inheriting from. And then inside the curly braces, we put a private float variable here. And then we have our public constructor here. Now, I purposely made this constructor incorrectly. In the base class, we had this int i created and it is private. However, down below, this inheriting class cannot adjust that private variable. If we wanted to, we could actually change it to protected, which is a keyword we will discuss in a future tutorial, but I wanna show you another way around that. Instead of i, what we can do is call the class constructor for the base class called my base right here, and that will do the job just fine. Any arguments we pass into this constructor call will be stored properly for the instance of base tied to our derived class. We can now test that by creating an instance of my derived class passing in two parameters here or arguments and then calling the function p from our derived class which calls the base class function of p that's just going to output i and what we we'd expect to see is two so let's go ahead and run that perfect just two awesome very cool now i have a question for you what do you think the order in is in which these classes are created in memory just like those tacky banner ad ads that you see or clickbait, the answer may surprise you. So here we have again our base class right up here in the constructor. I'm, I'm just outputting base in the derived class. We're just outputting derived. And I forgot to put the public accessor here. Silly me. Then down below, what we're doing is creating a simple instance of the derived class within the set of curly braces. As we remember from our previous lesson, any code passed into curly braces is going to be deleted at the end. So the instance will be created and then deleted. So let's go ahead and run our code and see what happens. First, our 
base class is being constructed and then our derived class is being constructed. The reason being is because first the derived class is being called and that in turn is actually calling the base class. And the base class is the first to resolve and then it passes back up to the derived class or the subclass and that is in turn finished second. So that is what we see here. Perfect. Better question is which is destructed first? You'd think it'd be the same order, right? All right, let's test out that theory. So let's go ahead and add destructors to both of these and run the class. And now both of these destructors are actually going to be in reverse order. The derived class is going to finish first and then the base class is going to be deleted. So interesting to know. So when you're trying to access stuff from memory or trying to figure out the priority of things, this becomes very, very important. Now you may be asking about pointers and variable instances of this stuff. Things get really hairy and complex when pointers and references get thrown into the mix, which leads us to polymorphism, which is our very next tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Great job keeping up. You are a fantastic programmer, and if you're looking to challenge your skills, check out hackerrank.com. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters, Jeremy Watt, JK, and Mike Jonas. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for your support, and as always, like, subscribe, and keep the dream alive.